think he's very comfortable with the uh, the class itself. Right. So uh, let's check the interview of both players. Hello, I'm Carlos, and that's Arnold. Um, it's pretty good for the uh, Hearthstone community. Um, I think it's really bad, and they should put it back. Um, I would be Leog because uh, I like him the most. Um, I would go back to Garden Eden because there is only one woman and she can't run away. Um, I would pick Arnold here. Hi, uh, my name is Andre. I'm known as Rainad and Hearthstone, and I'm the founder of Team Tempo Storm. And uh, yeah, I've been playing Hearthstone professionally for about a year now. I'm glad that the Undertaker nerf went through. Uh, metagame definitely needed to change a bit, and that's a good way to do it because it's a pretty frustrating card to lose to. And we've already seen some some changes in decks being viable, and hasn't really been. Like the metagame hasn't been solved quite yet, so we'll see where it goes, but I'm sure it'll be a little bit healthier than it was with uh, Broken Undertaker. Fuck Hoffer. Uh, if I was an animal companion, I would be a Misha for sure. Uh, Big Bang. So mm, take a second. I'm leaning towards Dark Onyx, but I wonder if there's a better choice. Pro probably Dark Onyx. He's like seven feet tall. All right, welcome back. After this break, I hope you enjoyed the little interviews. Um, we saw that Carlos has very, very special preferences and i mean he's he, last time his answer i think to the question which animal would you be was like a motherfucking dragon um so <laughs> it, it's pretty much the same vein of answers and uh reyna's distaste for animal companions rng i think showed through his answer um it's such a heavy swing card and w i know he dislikes it i i mean obviously i think a lot of people don't like the the rng the variants of it right uh, one of the biggest problems with the card and reyna has been very vocal about hating it, so you could tell um, <laughs> that he didn't like it very much. And funny enough, um, we got word between the um, the games that Kranish lost uh, two against Nims just three, so they were really close, apparently, in a really close series again. Uh, closer than we saw between uh, the initial match between Cypher and Thais, which is going to move on. We're waiting on Reynad here to actually show up. I think he's currently hanging out in the main menu to be waiting to face off against Carlos. Um, I, I hope Arnold is going to be helpful to Carlos. I don't know. Is it a 2v1? <laughs> I, I sure hope so. Uh, just because uh, Arnold is one of the best Hearthstone players out there. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, that, yeah, so the fact that Kranich lost to Nimsh means that Thais and Nimsh are going to play against each other. The winner of those is going to go directly to the finals tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And the loser... Uh, the loser of Nimsh versus Thais is going to go against the winner of Kranich versus Cypher, and uh, for for a last chance to get to the grand finals. Exactly, there is a losers bracket. So for those of you who weren't necessarily here at the beginning of the tournament, everything is you know best of five, and it's group stage right now. We're currently on the second match of group stage. We're in Group B. Group A was already done uh, between uh, you know the, we 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 played the games at the same time. We don't cast everything, but then we'll be moving on to losers bracket where some people will have a chance of coming back for the ability to get uh, to that grand finals and maybe you know get themselves the the last spot to win the game, uh, the entire series. So. Next match being Reynad versus Carlos. I mentioned they both brought the same decks in a way. Druid, Mage, and Paladin. Um, yep. You know, Reynad brought Rogue. Carlos brought Warrior. Do you think they're going to be... You know, Mage is a bit different right now where you can expect either Freeze Mage or Mech Mage. And based on what I saw, they both must be a little afraid because they both banned the other player's Mage. Yep. And I, I agree with this. Um, it may, Mage uh, matchups feel... 
kind of like coin flips at the moment. If Mage gets the Snowball going, then it's pretty much over. If they get the Scientist, they get Mirror Entity. Really hard to play around. Yep. So Rain out here playing his Paladin deck against Carlos's Druid. Uh, we see double Force of Nature in Carlos's starting hand, which indicates obviously that he's running double combo. Um, not the most popular version of Druid nowadays, but since the Undertaker nerf, it's been making a bit of a resurgence since it's you know it's able uh, to to get to the stage where they can get the combos off, especially with the sticky minions like Powdered Shredders. Yeah, and on the other hand, it looks like Reyna is going uh, pretty control by playing Acolyte of Pain and Sylvanas. Mm -hmm. So definitely not a Paladin is going to be as fast as Thai's deck that we've just seen. Yeah, I think Thais' deck was very much on the early game, aggress like mid aggressive mid-range, uh, as opposed to very control-heavy style. And just from this hand, you can tell that Reynad is playing something a little bit more um, safe. He, he is running Muster for Battle, pretty much guaranteed, if, if only to play it in the very late game as a uh, massive board-flooding tactic. Yeah, exactly. And is... What's the two-mana card in Carlos' son? The what, sorry? The two-mana card, Loot Hoarder? Oh, okay, so he's running Loot Hoarders. Yeah, he is Which running means loot he's hoarder. extremely, extremely aggressive, but Loot Hoarders and Ramp in the same deck is very interesting. Oh, the Wild yeah, Growth. Yeah, it's not, it's not something I see very frequently, but I think the reason might be that he wants to dig very, very free, like uh, heavily for those mm -hmm. combo pieces to make sure that he can get them off very consistently. Because sometimes, if you're, if you're running double combo and you don't find them uh, when you need to, which happens sometimes when you don't get your card draw, when your only card draw engine is... Uh, Ancient of Lore, and you're not running Azure Drakes, it can be pretty tough to get exactly what you want. And I think the Loot Hoarder might play into that a little bit. Alright, Humility in Reynad's deck, I like that. I saw that recently in another Paladin deck. It's a card that is coming back with Stampede and Kodo, which uh, Reynad yeah. mulliganed away. Hmm. I like Sludge Belcher, but... It's like a throwaway play. Yeah, you'd, you'd mm. so much like to get rid of this 4-1. Because it, it's so much value for uh, for the Shredder to attack a second time. Yeah, but you've got Equality Consecration, so you're probably somewhat comfortable um, with waiting it out and letting the Druid overextend. Reynad has to know that his opponent is running combos because of the Powdered Shredder. That is not a card you see very frequently in decks that do not run combo. They will tend to play something like a Sentient Shield Master. Although there would be probably a little bit of an argument to be made for playing Shredders in slower Druid decks um, right now, just because you're not afraid of aggro as much as you used to. Oh, we're silence on, on this Belcher. So that means he's not going to have it for Sylvanas, but... Wow! Is he going face? No way. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, okay that's no, an interesting line cool. of play. That is an interesting line of play. Um, I, I mean, Sylvanas and Tyrion are really what you want to silence here with for Carlos. Is there, is there a game plan I'm not, I'm not seeing? I, I don't know, but... Especially since uh, Carlos doesn't have combo in hand, so it's not like he's really looking for lethal I have no time for right now. He can hope to draw the combo, but I don't think he'd want to go all in like this. So do you have to trade your two minions for Sylvanas here? I mean, you could play Doctor Boom and get Boom Boss, but that, oh, like, that leaves you very open to equality plays. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go full face, then I guess you're really reliant on getting those combos. But then again, you use the Keeper of the Grove to silence off a non-Tyrion minion. Uh, you got a Sludge Belcher out of the way, so there's one left and one Tyrion. Mm -hmm. So the two taunts that Carlos must be expecting from Reynad right now are one more Sludge Belcher and a single Tyrion Forging. Mm -hmm. I, I guess since he silenced uh, the Belcher, like you say, he's not going to have an answer to Tyrion, so oh wow, maybe he's going, well, might as well just uh, go all in and not try to, to deal with the board because I'm going to get overrun anyways at some point. So I like the equality, uh, I mean the Elder Peacekeeper, sorry, on the uh, Doctor Boom here and Defender of Argus over the next few turns because the taunts that Carlos thought he was re removing with Sludge Belchers um, are suddenly getting more numerous. He only thought he'd be dealing with Sludge Belchers and Tyrion and there comes the Defender of Argus. Not exactly what you want to see. Yeah, I really, really like the Sargus, and it's uh, it's a card that I haven't seen uh, on the ladder decks out of Paladin. So I really like this card for uh, Reyna that allows him to go more late game. 
with combos like Humility Kodo and play that Sylvanas and... Uh, yeah, but right now, Carlos' advantage is being pressed. I mean, if you look at the current board state, you might think that Reynad is in a really good position. I mean, he's got Equality Consecration, but we know um, that all it takes for Carlos to snowball out of control is to get himself the combo pieces. Reynad mm -hmm. is currently on 22 health, has no healing. He's lost his uh, Argus taunt line, and Carlos is about to get another layer of card draw. So the card advantage is really massive for Carlos. Reynad has multiple dead cards that aren't going to do much on their own. And the moment Carlos gets a combo, this could spiral out of control. Yeah, I agree. But Reynad still has a quality Consecrate, so he, he has an out if Carlos overextends. Uh, if Carlos doesn't, though, that's going to be way harder for, uh, for Reynad to stay in the game. Yeah, and look at this board right are... now. This is bad. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> but then you just play Sylvanas and it's play and forget. I don't think Carlos is going to be worried about Tyrion here. Because no you just play Sylvanas and you pass. I mean, it, there's he can't equality consecrate because then you take Tyrion. Mm -hmm. um, well, if you play a Kodo and a token, mm, then Sylvanas yeah. might not kill Tyrion. And if, like, you could you could send Tyrion to... I think you could Humility the 5-5, five five, the, the, the Ancient of Lore. Kill that 2-2 mm -hmm. with Tyrion, and then Stampede and Kodo. That'll kill the 1-5 uh, the that's left over. And then you There's can probably play a token, but... Yeah, you could kill if a Shade as well. Shade, it's good. awesome as well. Yeah. Both two agree. pretty good outs. And there is very little here. I mean, Carlos doesn't have a swipe. Doesn't have a way to kill the 1-1. One -one, uh, which means that Sylvanas will not necessarily be able to guarantee Tyrion in this case. Mm -hmm. Let me think. Wow, and right now must be worried about combo plays here. I mean, look yeah, at this board. This is very, very dangerous. Even if there is no combo in Carlos's hand, Reynad must be playing around it very heavily. And uh, it's kind of surprising that Carlos hasn't found a single piece of his combos since he threw them out. What if... Hmm. Uh, you're one man off from playing Consecrate Humility and Kodo, so... He has oh, to what pick... if you equality, attack Sylvanas, then Consecrate your own Tyrion off the board? <laughs> Uh, there's no and, way. And give your opponent a uh, 15 damage. Yeah, Wait, you what? see, th th this is a play I love. I am loving this play here from uh, from Reynad. But he's guaranteed oh, yeah, to get his okay, weapon. Okay. Yes, yes, I I like this. I like this. I very much like that play from Reynad. That's a line of play I hadn't really considered. Um, this makes so much sense now that he makes it. I can't even believe I didn't think about that. It yeah, makes it's so way much too much sense. It's so much better now that Carlos um, played both rats. Because exactly. that would be the one card that would make Reynads play terrible. Yeah. And but we're looking right now at Blood Mage Thalnos, a card that I haven't seen much in Druid. Especially in Fast yeah. Druids, that's very interesting. I, I guess he's just playing it as a loot hoarder with... Uh, j just for the card draw, basically. Yeah, is Reynad forced to use his uh, his weapon on Sylv here? Yeah, I mean, he shouldn't go to first, right? He, he has to get rid of Sylvanas. Or does he plan to just let her attack into Sludge Belcher? Let me think. I mean, he could Humility it, so she can't really kill anything, but... She um... can kill herself and get, get a minion, because you don't yeah, want exactly. to have any minions. Okay, so he's going to Humility and attack it, I believe, and then uh, probably drop a Sledge Belcher to stay safe. Yeah, he's safer from combo plays with Sledge Belcher than Stampede and Kodo, obviously. Yeah. And that's right. probably, at, at this point, he's definitely playing around those. Those are the most, the most dangerous things that could happen to him right now. At the same time, since Carlos... Ah, uh, yeah. Because if he Kodos, Carlos draws an extra card, so it gets way more dangerous. Look at the amount of card draw in Carlos's deck. That Azure Drake, that Blood Mage Thalnos, that Loot Hoarder, that is... And one Ancient of Lore at least that we've seen. He might not be running two. I'm, I'm starting to think there's something here that... Um, I, I think he might have substituted one Ancient of Lore for something like more early slash mid-game draw. I, that's yeah, how it's I really, starting to look to me. I really like this. It's very interesting. I don't know how it does against Agro, but against Control, I, I really like it. Because it cycles so fast that you can get to combo way quicker. And also just have those minions that are annoying, but 
like that Paladin has to deal with, but that will draw cards anyways, so they replace themselves. And the Shade of Naxxor Elm is here going to be an amazing card for him because it's going to allow him to get guaranteed combo value. Uh oh. And there's that combo. Yeah, speaking of combo, and right now Reyna's hand is not equipped to deal with this board, and he's at the magic number 14. Yeah, um, he that would magic have... number is die oh, a oh. complete death. Reyna has to both clear and taunt here, or heal. And he. Uh, quartermaster, nope. attack the Drake, consecrate, you attack face with the weapon. He's got no taunts, I mean, there's. There, there's so little for him to do, if anything, and the game is over. Um, yeah, Reynad is gonna lose the combo. Wow. Not exactly surprising. I mean, that's the way, uh, you know, Dex for Druids tends to close the game. But I really like the Blood Mage Thalos, Loot Hoarder, Azure Drake here from Carlos. I'm not sure if he's running one or two Ancients of Lore. Do you think he might have cut one? He, he might have, because he, he also runs two Drakes. That is insane. Yeah, it's one of those really... I mean, I, I guess maybe you could substitute out uh, Spectral Knights for Azure Drakes and something like a Fast Druid, right? Just to get more card draw and more consistent combo plays um, and sacrifice the, you know, the consistency, quote-unquote, of the Spectral Knight. You cut the Spectral Knights out, you put in the Azure Drakes, you get yourself your combos faster, get better swipes in some circumstances, get, you know, the ability to cycle your Wrath for two. Um, so I think, in a way, there's an argument to be made for it. And the Blood Mage Thalos also acting as a good swipe buffer. Uh, because it kills Sludge Belchers right away, it'll hit for 5 on Ancients of Lore from opponents. So you could probably justify that. I really do like Carlos's, uh deck approach here. Yeah, I like it because against aggro as well, like, you have minions. You have the, those loot hoarders to just take, take some damage, slow your opponent down, yeah. and get faster to your answers. Because Druid has great answers to aggro, but he has to get them. And if you don't get your swipes, if you don't get your Rast, it's going to be really hard. But if you actually both slow your opponent and get faster to those answers, I I think uh, it, it's pretty good. So I like the cycle cards in Carlos's deck being good both against aggro and against control. Yeah, it's interesting too that they're also punishing greedy control decks in a way because you will draw. I mean, you know, like think about uh, Control Warrior, who their only guard draw uh, in general is either shield blocks which some people have been cutting in one of for a long time now, putting Shield Maidens in. So yep. even post Undertaker Nerve, they're still left with a single one of them. And the uh, Paladins, which tend to rely on, if not Acolytes of Pain as a one of, they will be relying on Lay on Hands, which comes much later in the game. So against those control decks, I feel like this fast Druid is perfectly equipped to get the answers very fast. And it's not even weak against Handlock. Double combo just does perfectly against Handlock in general. And uh, that extra reach he gets with card draw is just incredible. I really like Carlos's uh, deck building yep. there. I, I guess he's been cutting probably cards like the Black Knight and Sylvanas out of his Druid just to, uh, to cycle more. Have... But he, has Sylva he had Sylvanas in this game. Um, but the okay, Black yeah, Knight I didn't did. see. I did not see Black yep. Knight. Yeah. I, I don't I... know if Black Knight is viable there. I mean, it is viable. I just don't know if it's an optimal pick since he's playing yep. so much spell damage. Yeah, and also since it, it looks like his deck just wants to play everything, cycle fast, and not keep any cards that are too situational. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to get into the next game here. Carlos' Druid against Reynad's Druid. So Reynad right. has got to feel that his deck is more suited to dealing with the Druid than, uh, than his uh, Rogue deck, which I guess, I guess against Fast Druid, that would tend to be true. And based on Scenarius and Sludge Belcher, I'm going to have to say Reynad is playing a much slower Druid than Carlos. Yeah, definitely, and he's running the Black Knight, which is extremely good against Druid. As long as Carlos plays his, um, his Druid of the Claw in taunt form, which he might not do. Alright, so this is good game, guys. Wild Growth was played. Um, we're going to move <laughs> on to the next match in a minute. <laughs> oh, God. Th these beginnings of games when one Druid gets Wild Growth and the other one doesn't are so excruciating. Um, when you're the player on the uh, receiving end of the lack of Wild Growth, it can be really problematic. Do you do you play a shade? Okay, Carlos plays a shade. Doesn't want a wild growth. I guess since he drew another shade, he's gonna shade and growth next turn, and he's gonna be three mana ahead of Reynad. Yeah, I really like Reynad's hand though. Without the wild growth, he's still managing to do some pretty nice tempo swings with that sludge belcher. Gonna stop the shade uh, in the future. And right now, even though Carlos has a really nice mana advantage, he's not curving. Never mind. He's not curving well. <laughs> there goes the shade and wild growth for that seven mana already. Double wild growth for Carlos. 
this is this is way greedy. Carlos really want he's gonna have to draw what he wants because uh, he's well, not gonna I like have this play. Games. I really like this play because what it says is if I play Drake, I know I'm getting swiped, right? And at the moment, Reynad is gonna go on full aggression gears, and you know what? I think this is an amazing read here for Reynad. Just realizing that yep. if he doesn't go on the offensive, there's nothing that's gonna make him win the game. He has yeah. to put so much pressure on Carlos that Carlos is gonna be making the trades later in the game. Reyna has really nice turn six set. Like he's perfect curving right now. Druid, yep. or the claw, Sylvanas, Doctor Boom. Um, possibly is gonna be able to find something else to curve in on turn eight. So looking at this hand from Reyna, even though I thought the wild growths would do a lot of work, they're being a little less effective than Carlos hoped they would be. Yeah, the the fast druid is get is getting on the defensive, and that's not good because he's not the one running taunts. Mm -hmm. He's not the one that's geared to, uh, to stabilize uh, under pressure. So there are some multiple lines of play here for Carlos. One of them is obviously not Ancient of Lore because you can't afford drawing. He has to use either Keeper of the Grove with Hero Power or Force of Nature to wither some of the, uh, the aggression that Reyna is being able to pack right now. And uh, that he's, uh, he's going to go for the Force of Nature, which is a really oh, good play what? in my mind. That is a bit I... odd. Oh no, never mind. Makes okay, sense now. okay. Got it. Yeah. Really nice uh, save there. Wow. Nothing to contest that Shade of Nax right now. Just a Druid of the Claw and Taunt for him. Wow, so... Hmm. Scarlet is going to get back into this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if the Drake draws a Wrath... Or... I mean, there's so many things... Oh, wow. Oh, really? there's the Wrath, but... <laughs> You, you just use hero power, but you're you're getting weaker and weaker to combo, but you're still ahead. I'm just looking yeah. at Sylvanas right now, and that's gonna put a dent in Carlos's ability to keep going. Because he can't go on the offensive, he's not nearly close to lethal. There, There's still the, the Keeper. Um, keeper Wrath? Then... Yeah. I don't think you can afford hero powering here, can you? I mean, if, if, you, if you attack Sylvanas as Carlos... So your opponent's on six mana, so I think you could. I have no time for games. Because I don't think you want you want to let Sylvanas trade with your minions. No. Oh wow, that Innervade gonna allow uh, Carlos to get even more value out of his turn. I thought he might be able to make he would be forced into making a, a turn that wasn't exactly as good as he wanted. But right now he's gonna be able to use Ancient of Lore and cycle even more cards, which puts Reynad in the awkward position of having to draw a boom against. Uh, Okay. Carlos' current board. Wow. So, what do you think he's keeping the Keeper for? A taunt? I think he's just trying to keep yeah. them for Sludge Belchers, um, or some other play that Reynad might have. Interesting. Oh wow, double swipe. This double is so aggressive, swipe? But, but Carlos is so behind on HP, he can't really utilize those swipes to get get lethal faster. I have, I have the, yeah, there's a really good play here with Keeper of the Grove, Blood Mage Swipe. I mean, it's it's not stellar, but it's definitely not bad. Hmm. Yeah, he, oh, this, is, this is such a hard spot for Carlos, because he, he wants to be on the aggression, but at the same time, he, he doesn't want to die to combo. But I really like this play because the swipe will clear the board for five on boom, and the boom yep. bots will have three, tar four targets to choose from. Uh, and if they yep. hit low on something like, wow, oh, wow. That is perfect. I was gonna say like keeper and ancient, then uh, <laughs> suddenly Carlos ends up in a dominant position, and he is. If you're looking at this board right now, you look at you know the amount of minions on the board for Carlos. And, I mean, Reynad is happy to see Lotha, but he's got to be wondering, is that early enough? Isn't it a bit too late? Am I going to get comboed right now? And lucky for yeah. him, he's not. I mean, I guess you just swipe and then charge a Druid of the Claw. Uh, yeah. Or, or you swipe and play the lore again to draw even more cards because you have that Innervate. I, I guess the lore would be even better because then you could get faster to Savage Roar. Yeah, because Savage Roar is really going to be the winning card here, right? Then yeah. again, how much damage is there? Two, three, four, five, six... Um, there's another, you know, nine from the Druid of the Claw and the Swipe. But if he's worried about combo, then Carlos is going to have to go for the slightly more defensive play. Yeah, you lower Innovate Swipe the, mm -hmm. the tree and then... Oh, wow, Sky Golem. Sky Golem. What? Oh, goody. I don't know what I'm... You know what, Carlos? Well done. I am confused. And yeah. you know what? He actually is running double Ancient of Lore. Yeah. He is running double Ancient of Lore, two Azure Drakes, one Loot Hoarder, one Blood Mage. What did he cut? 
Yeah, I, what I have... on earth did he cut? This is the kind of deck where when you lose to it in tournament, you just go like, how the hell is this working? And like, I... No, you you know yeah. how it works, but you're like, how the hell did that guy just think about putting or cutting some essential cards? And the thing is, I can't yeah, exactly. figure out what was cut out of there. I mean, yeah, exactly. aggro druids will generally run spectral knights. He's not running them. He's running yeah. drakes and the pilot of sky golems. We haven't seen black knight yet. I know what it is. So that Yetis. might be it. Uh, it doesn't look like he runs anything over um, over eight mana. So no rag, no scenarios either. Mm -hmm. Just straight up mid mid game minions uh, that are going yeah. to stick. Pilot of sky golems. Exactly. You know, Ble belcher. Uh, not belcher, but uh, shredder. So everything he's got is just. Gonna be able to deal damage no matter what. And that is lethal this found is lethal. from Carlos. Uh, wow, that's about two zero for Carlos is insane. Let's see, um, I nice. just I, Reynad's got to feel a little uneasy about this because he threw his druid at it, his so his paladin at it. That is a rogue deck, and rogue doesn't. deal well against double combo druid it just it, it just takes damage and can't stop the you know snow even about usually you can is be proactive about it Druid will charge the druid of the claw they'll go face they run combo you don't have enough healing set up and you're using your weapon for removal which means phase this could have card and is so good against rogue because no, i if think you... uh, oh insane yeah because the the only answer Rogue has for an innovation, uh, if you if you taunt it, would be a sap. But then the card comes again, and and Rogue's yeah. minion don't deal very well with uh, Druid's high HP minions. Trade favorite, so you have to rely on spells that are net tempo gains, like back backstab eviscerate. The only drawback is that they're not net tempo gains because you already took the, your face of the tempo gain. What you don't get is card advantage, and eventually the Druid runs you out of cards. And you run into the issue of just not having answers. So it's gonna come yep. down to perfect deadly poison lineups with the perfect blade flurries and anti kill bots. If Freynat is even running, you know, two of those at that point. Mm -hmm. And he, even then, Carlos is yep. so much. Is he even? Is he ever gonna run out of steam? That is the question. Yeah, I, I don't think he's gonna be very worried about losing minions because you know between blood and those azure drakes, the cycle yeah. is just you know it's it's cycling itself. He doesn't even have to try. The deck just, yeah. you know, gets dug uh, completely. Yeah, and I, I guess that's why he can afford to play um, the wild growth so aggressively, not keeping them for, even when he wild growth on turn 5, not having combo, he knows he has so much cycling, he doesn't need to keep the wild growth for cycle, he just want to go for mana. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it, it, just to get the card draw is just perfectly fine. Yeah. So apparently we have word from the admins that Alish uh, won against Powder. So Alish, a name that I haven't really seen much around, is winning currently over Powder in the Group B. Uh, group B, obviously, we have two two you know games going on at the same time. We had Reynad and Carlos that you saw right now, but at the same time, Alesh and Powder were playing. Alesh won, uh, which is going to put Powder in the losers bracket. He's he has a chance to come back, but he's going to have to fight his way. Um, through that bracket to get a chance at getting to the grand finals. Yeah, so, and on uh, Reynad with his rogue, Alish is gonna face Carlos for uh, a place in the finals, and Reynad and Powder are gonna have to battle against each other as uh, their last chance to get in tomorrow's finals. Yep, and I'm looking at, I mean, Reynad can't possibly feel good about having to sweep uh, Druid, Paladin, and Warrior with a rogue deck. If the Druid gets a good start, oh. this is gonna feel excruciating for him. Yep. So far, though, Carlos has mulligan pretty much everything, I feel like, so... Yep, I, I think at the moment, um, Carlos' hand... I mean, he's gonna have to mulligan the four cards, because he can't use any mm -hmm. of those. And the... Reynad has his backstab. If he mm -hmm. finds a sprint with a prep, um, that could be a really good way to come back in the game card advantage-wise. Mm -hmm. what, what about keeping Lothab, though, as Carlos? Because you have quite a bit of early game, even if you don't get your Wild Growth and your Innovate early. Uh, you still have loot hoarders and shades, so he decided to keep Lothib to uh, 
Yeah, but this is a whiff for a starting hand for uh, Carlos. Yeah. This is the biggest whiff I've ever seen for a Druid starting hand. But I don't then think if he I've draws Innervate, it becomes worse. suddenly pretty damn good. Yeah, it's a matter so, of getting that Innervate though. And, yeah, uh, and at the moment... And Re Reynad's hand can't really punish su such an, a lack of aggression from Carlos because Reynad only has answers. Well, Reynad might be able to get himself a prep sprint. If he, if he gets a sprint, then yeah. his turn four will be sprint into a Zhur Drake, into backstab and something else. So I feel like right now, Reyna. What? Hello! What's he this card? He got the best deals <laughs> anywhere. At six mana, it's a card I've seen run as a one of in some very niche deck lists. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually pretty happy to see that. I'm happy to see Gaddison Auctioneer getting played. Wow. Right. Blood Mage so Talos played for the cycle. You know what? The last time I saw people do that was when Miracle Rogue needed its card draw so badly that it just dropped yeah. the Blood Mage for to get to that you know double Leroy. Uh, I mean Leroy Shadow Step play. But I I really like it because this this forces Reynad to use a charge of his dagger, and there there's the draw of course. But uh, then Reynad's gonna have to re dagger before playing a deadly poison or uh, an oil later, which slows down the Gadgetan play if. If Reynard runs it, and we know he does. Yeah, but Carlos is gonna regret dropping that Lothab when Gadgetan comes out, because he's gonna be... I mean, Reynard might be able to cycle up to three cards off of that. You know, Gadgetan, Backstab, Prep on the same turn. Um, he's gonna get at least three cards, and Toshly... Toshly! Oh, what? Well... Reynard is inventing Hearthstone again, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. What am I looking at, and why is it so awesome? This is crazy! I like I'm this. in love with this. <laughs> I don't. I can't even commentate this game anymore. All right, so we have Drew to the Clock gonna come down here for Carlos. Um, he's probably. Do, do you think you charge a Drake? Cause you're worried about AOE. You know, a fan, single fan of knives, mm -hmm. um, putting a lot of problems uh, in your way. Oh, wow. Oh he's God. About his own Drake. You know what? He's gonna regret everything he's ever gone through in his life if if he what? if this gadget sound falls down on the board with a Drake. Yeah. Ton. Oh, charge? Oh, you're gonna hate this, Carlos. I am sorry, but... <laughs> oh. Carlos, I don't know what to tell you. How, how does Carlos does it, though? You you backstab the 4-4, you take it in the face again? Uh, you can get it, son. Backstab, oh. prep, blade Flur flurry. Like, just name it, man. You've got all the answers okay. in the world. This is... This is crazy. I mean, Carlos has to say well played. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, oh that hurts. Oh, what? Oh. Okay. Reynard's back. He even saw the prep sprint for the following turn. Do, do, this is a do, miracle. Please, just because. Well, no, 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 no. You can't. You have. You have Tinker's oil. You have to play either with that or sprint. Um, I mean, look at prep Tinker Sharp Sword, and look at Carlos's dry hand. He has nothing to remove this board. Nothing. He can play Sylvanas as a deterrent. But look at the amount of damage Reynard's gonna be able to pack in before that happens. I... wow. I, I really like Reynard's deck. And he preps. He prep eviscerates for the for the damage. I, I guess now... I mean, Reynard's so far ahead at the moment. He doesn't know it. He, no, he, he does, I think. But maybe not as much as he, he, he sees, yeah. yeah. He doesn't know how, how bad Carlos' spot is. Yeah. But... I think Reynard's goal here is to not show Toshley, to try and not show maybe the oil in the sprint. Like, to, to hide as much information as possible, because... Yeah, you still have to play to win, Reynard. though, but this is really close to win. The thing is, I think Carlos has to expect Reynard is playing... Did, I, did you see what I saw? He, he actually attacked the, the Drake, and I think I... he's just dead. Is this... Deadly Tinker's Blade Flurry? No, that's not Blood Mage. I, I don't even know. I. So Carlos was playing to win, and by that I mean he tried to weaken the Drake so that Keeper of the Grove could be played next turn. But this is this is not working. I really do think Reynad should try and secure the game while showing you as, as least information as possible about his deck. Um, I'm having audio glitches with you. I think uh, you might wish to rejoin the call if anything. Shouldn't be too long. So. Reynad, I think it's just gonna win this game on the back of the deadly poison here, on, on the Tinker Sharpsword oil. 
Am I am I back? Is it working? All right, so I'm back. I don't know what happened to Noxious. So it looks like Reina isn't dead yet. Uh, uh, Carlos isn't dead yet. Oops, my bad. But it's pretty close. In oh, okay. Moonfire yourself for for the win. And so Reynad takes it and is now down two to one, and is gonna have to still win two games if he wants to win this match. So it's gonna be quite hard. All right, so yeah, so Noxious drop. He he should come back, no worries. And uh, so th this this deck from Reynad is so very interesting. I as much as I love. Carlos's deck, uh, his Druid. I really, really like Reynad's version of Miracle as well because, wow, running Toshli for spare parts so he can cycle with Gadgetan, it it works. Cycling with spare parts is definitely a great idea. But, oh, is Noxious back? Yeah, apparently I'm back. I don't know exactly what happened. Um, I have no idea. I'm guessing connectivity problems again. Welcome to the Hearthstone esports scene where connectivity problems seem to be rampant these days. Yeah. All right. So basically, um, Carlos uh, moonfired his own face for for the lethal. Wait, moonfired? Yeah. Oh, keeper of the grove. Yeah, yeah, keeper of okay. the grove is moonfire. Okay, I thought you meant like the actual moonfire card. All right, good. So oh was, no, that uh, would have been so bad to show this. Mm -hmm. So if, we're looking at. A, so Reynad is actually gonna win the first game against Druid. I think we can put this not only on Reynad's deck, um, but I think Carlos's starting hand being so miserable. Really mm -hmm. played a huge role in Reynad's ability to get the win. This is not generally a really good matchup for Rogue, but that might allow Reynad to sweep um, because Rogue has is pretty. It might be weak against uh, that specific archetype, but against Paladin, it's got Fan mm -hmm. of Knives. It's got the Saps if it's more control. Against Warrior, the same situation is true if you don't get your weapons, Harrison Jones, mm -hmm. on time. Um, I feel like Reynad might have a chance to reverse sweep here. Yeah, I think this was definitely the worst matchup for Rogue. Unless mm -hmm. Carlos is, is running some weird Pally and Warrior, but as far as uh, regular archetypes are concerned, Rogue uh, should have a better time. It, those aren't going to be easy easy games, Yeah. but we, uh, those aren't going to be as hard, as hard as against this Druid. And uh, no. I guess Carlos has been greedy by keeping the slow tip, and he probably regretted it as soon as he had his first cards in hand. Yeah, as soon as he, st he started top decking really bad. I mean, double Savage War starting hand is as bad as it gets. And I think this is a reason why a lot of people have uh, have mentioned that they don't like double combo much. is because a lot of the time you end up with... You know, there are four cards in your deck which are nearly dead for the longest time. Um, yeah. So this is probably one reason why people tend to stray away from that specific archetype. Ooh, Toshley, yeah. hello. Yeah, and uh, Reynad gets the coin, which is so important for Miracle. And he keeps Toshley. That is, yeah. that I is like I like keeping Toshley here because it's one of those really big mid game minions that Warrior will have to expend a lot of resources on. And if you can keep his armor count low enough, then he won't be able to just shield slam it outright. So there's only going to be execute for Toshley, which is still uh, which is a great answer for Warrior. And but maybe if Reynad can can draw the executes or at least one before playing Toshley. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think Carlos, knowing that there's a Gadgeton Auctioneer in here, is going to make uh, a very... He might take different lines of play here, just based on that knowledge. Yeah, and he, he's not... He doesn't know what, what Reynad has. He didn't see the sprint, didn't see Toshley. So, uh... Yeah, I mean, you still... can assume that sprint is in rogue decks nowadays, but after you've seen Gadgeton, you've got to be wondering whether somebody is playing, you know, two sprints or what. Um, yeah. He's got to be curious. He might be, Reynad could be just be playing double gadgets on and not any sprints. Yep, which is probably what Carlos has to wonder at this point. And mm -hmm. I, I suspect it's, it's one gadgets on and uh, yeah, Powder Shredder, not, not a terrible card in Warrior now that uh, Undertaker has been kind of phased out. It's wow. a lot more viable. I've seen Warrior lists run um, 
powder shredders and also uh, the powdered sky golems. Those have been very but consistent. It's definitely pretty good in this matchup. Mm -hmm. And without without a gadget on, is it good here for Reynad to coin the SI7 and dagger again? I think I would rather coin SI7 than backstab SI7. Mm -hmm. It's obviously a yeah. much stronger play. But it, it's, this, this game is really anyone's game at this point, depending on mm -hmm. how the mid game looks. Because Carlos does have his Fairy War Axe and his Death Bite, and the Alex Straws are already prepared, assuming Reynad's uh, health total remains mm -hmm. fairly high. So the brawl also pretty helpful if something you know like Gadgetan comes out and has a massive Violet Teacher turn. Violet Teacher is yeah. really weak against uh, against brawl. Mm -hmm. what, what's annoying here by using the coin for Reyna is that now he can't coin Tashli next turn. So if the Gadgetan gets removed, like he will now, Reyna doesn't have a good play next turn unless he top decks it. Yeah, I mean prep sprint is pretty solid. Yeah. Do you just fan of knives nothing to get card draw here, or do you I'm pretty set sure up you the do. thinkers? Yeah, I'm, I'm I think you have sure you to do, because fan is is not very good against warrior with the ah oh, that Drake. Amazing card here, but it would have been yeah. amazing as a you know star of the turn card. But right yeah. now, um, Toshley seems like a pretty strong play for Carlos. Mm -hmm. There is no shield slam in his hand right now, so execute is all he's got. So Carlos is shield blocking instead of playing Savannas. Yeah, I... Powdered Sky Golem. I am loving Carlos today. What's well, going on with these decks? Carlos, what are you doing to my warrior metagame? <laughs> oh, wow. Aggressive, Sabotage. aggressive warrior. Sabotage is an excessively fun card here. Oh, this is this is gonna be good against Warrior. Uh oh. Hmm. Cool task. When when he, I mean, he could hit the face, execute, and play a golem. I feel like that would be a lot a better. Play, yeah. But then, then he he'd be afraid of sap. That's a big thing. Because if if he doesn't have a weapon up, Reynad saps his six drop, then he doesn't have anything to deal with what Reynad plays on the board. But then you let him overextend and you run into a brawl, uh, pretty decent brawl turn. But playing Sylvanas first, I, I think the way Carlos is looking at this is that he's got the brawl. And he's thinking, if he doesn't kill Sylvanas, then I'm guaranteed to get value off of brawl. Oh. Uh, well, here's the sap. <laughs> uh, Alright, well, if you look at this right now, um, Reynad is currently on 9 cards. So if he draws off the Drake, then saps, he is going to be again on... You know, he's gonna end up at nine cards at that point, and then Toshley gets killed, and that puts him on. Uh, oh, that's a good point. I think he's gonna have to be wary of overdrawing by a tiny margin, but. But then he could. He could, prep eviscerate just to to take off some armor, well to finish off all the armor and. Or may, maybe maybe he preps uh, tinkers now and, and then, just goes uh, full face. Then wouldn't have enough mana for Drake's sap. Wait, no, you know what? You prep Tinkers, then you sap, and then you go face. <laughs> and you just let him deal with this. No, that's too BGH vulnerable. It's, you can't possibly yeah. do something like this. Yeah, I, I guess he might have to... Uh, I, either either backstab Savannah's just to not waste it, or prep Evis, or not play the tree. Okay, so there are Armor plating? Goes. Do we see the armor plating, or is he gonna keep that for Gaddisan as long as possible? Oh, 12 damage, that's no more armor for Carlos. So Shield Slam is not even a viable top deck here. It's all about the execute. Yep. Is there a, was there a point to armor plating here? I don't, I don't think anything... Oh, uh, no, there's none, there's none. There's nothing... Under. Alright, Ragnaros would have done it, but that's it, really. Um, but that's not really your primary concern, because if yeah, he yolo rags here, you're way ahead. Yeah, and I don't think anything in Warrior deals seven, but not eight. So. Yeah, there's Ragnaros, but that's it. Like no, nothing else would have done it. Yeah, but Ra Rag still kills it at eight, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, Drake Flurry that gives uh, six armor to Carlos, but there's probably no right, no way around it, anyways. Well, you could Drake Flurry right now, set up a pretty decent. Uh... Board wipe. It's it's not terrible. You're gonna give him armor, but is he? he I don't think he's gonna get a much better blade flurry at this point. Outside of like a later one, possibly if he's got a second. He 
he has to be, yeah, otherwise he's gonna discard next turn. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Edwin. Is Reyna oh. bringing Miracle Roll back? Is that what Reyna is trying to do here? Is he making a point? He says, you know, there's a reason they nerfed Gadgetan, and here it is. If it weren't nerfed, yeah. it would be completely broken. We spoke of that a little earlier. Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Uh, that you know that sabotage is gonna be sickeningly good. Oh. That is gonna that... be the disgusting sabotage. Well, and it. Wow. Oh wow. But then what, what's the, I guess I guess Reynard goes for a huge Van Cleef here. Drake Van Cleef. Yep. Looks like yeah, because your Tarsley oh, didn't oh. get VGH, so you have to assume he doesn't have it, right? The Brotherhood Maybe. Okay. Oh wait. Oh, he played. He played under um, VGH. All right. Well yeah. That is great. Really, really well done from Reynard. Great thinking. Okay, so Cartless goes, you can't kill me. <laughs> Wait, you wow. can't kill me? This is Rogue we're talking about. Yeah, He's but... got 10 on board. Carlos has 20 health. But Reynard doesn't have... Reynard doesn't have lethal. He's gonna have to fish. He's gonna have to fan... and try to get it. Yeah, at least some kind of board. So that's oh, five, I... six, seven. No, four, five. Six. He's got twelve. He's got sixteen. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Well, I, I mean, I Fan guess... of Knives has to be played. I guess he evisces Grom, fans, and SI sevens Grom to have a bigger. Oh, you could just freeze Grom. Mm. You could just freeze Grom with emergency oh, yeah. coolant, right? Right. But then if if Carlos has a silence, then that's pretty funny. But. Yeah. I I guess Reyna is trying to find a way to not die this turn by the board and to still have lethal next turn, hoping that Carlos doesn't have a weapon. Yeah, so I guess uh, if it's raining the face makes more sense in that case. Yeah, I mean, if you if you go full face here, do you risk the, the just the... He can't win. I mean, he can't remove Grom and deal enough damage to at least live through the uh, emergency yeah. coolant uh, to, to the Fire War Axe. Agreed. I just don't see how Reynard's supposed to get out of this one. Nope. So Carlos takes it 3 1 and is going to go against um, Alish. Wow. I, I, I'm i sad to, uh, to, to not have had uh, a game 5 with this rogue. And I, I'm sad to not have seen. Um, Carlos is piled in because I, I guess it would have been a very interesting deck. So, well, I, yeah, this was very interesting. I, I really, really like uh, Carlos's deck, and I, I'm, I'm gonna ask him the deck list and go uh, take them for a ride on the ladder, definitely. And uh, Noxious, it looks like Noxious is having some problems. He should get back shortly. And the next match that we're gonna watch is gonna be Masan versus E up from Gre So uh Yeah, don't forget once again everyone to uh go check out Mad Katz's uh giveaway on their Facebook page at facebook.com slash uh forward slash madcats.german. It's on their German uh division that there's the giveaway. And that way you also can win. Uh, I I think they're giving away... I know that it... Uh, I, I think they're giving away two sets of...
Calling 